Which world records are you going for? Everything, yeah. all of them, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm here at Derby Velodrome to tell you about what I fervently believe to be the most exciting story in our sport right now. It's a real David versus Goliath story about a group of underdogs who've been taking on the establishment. Who what bike are a small cycling team and they're based here inside the velodrome and they've been competing against the biggest national teams and winning despite operating on a shoestring budget. You may have heard of them already because they've been making lots of headlines through winning national titles, World Cup golds, Commonwealth medals, World Championship golds and breaking world records. Their success has been incredibly exciting because through defying convention and tradition, they've completely shaken up the sport by the application of science, maths, and logic. And this approach has been likened to Graham O'Brien, who famously took on Chris Boardman and British Cycling in the 90s. But let's go inside, meet the guys, and find out how they're taking on the world and how they're so fast, and, well, how they've arguably made the People's Republic of Barbados, the number one ranked nation in track pursuiting. I think at first they thought we were mad. Right, we're thrown out the way it's always been done and trying this tactic instead. For him to break Wiggins, can I have to say? Can I say the number? No. You look at all these other guys sitting in there, and it's yeah. something Johnny keeps pointing out, but they're literally unhappy. World class at having fun. The team formed off the back of friends Charlie Tanfield and Dan Bigham having a go at the National Track Championships and deciding they'd like to form a team and have a crack at the team pursuit the following year. We managed to convince this guy to join. He was training at Loughborough Uni at the time. Come along, don't have to finish, mate, don't worry, just do a long turn and eject. The big national teams, how have they responded to you rocking up at these events like from when you first started and how has that changed? and now, now you've actually started to have success. So I think at first they thought we were mad. Yeah, 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 the, the, the Italy one. Yeah, Italy just staring at us, it, going round at like world record mm. splits in a training session. Like, yeah, yeah, so, so, so like mad. obviously like we've got, you go to these World Cups and you have um, so generally three track sessions before the race to sort of get familiarisation. And we're just like, well, what do you do with them? Like, I don't know. So we, you know, we completely left field. We think, all right, what is the best thing we can do for performance? So we were like, all right, cool. We're going to do a short race pace effort perfect taper, Steve Faulkner et al will lap that up. We, you know, we're doing a standing 2K, and lo, lo and behold, you've got Philippe Ghana and Viviani standing on the rails. You're like, all right, cool, I'm going to kick through. <laughs> so effectively, it used to be, yeah, questioning, looking mm. at us like, these guys are mad, but now they've gone, actually, they're onto something. So stuff mm. like the iPad, they all copy, the positions are starting to copy. Um, Everyone runs like the socks. It's a who bike star yeah. package. Even like the Medi method they tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. In fact, the Aussie, like... the Aussie junior team keep trying it. They keep apparently, apparently they tried it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes big commitment, I think, from mm. any national governing body to say, right, we're thrown out the way it's always been done and mm. trying this tactic instead. Because you, it's something you've got to commit to for months of training and it's something we committed, or obviously committed to from the off. And how you optimise that, how long does each rider go, how much recovery did they get, so what order you go in, what turn strategy. And it, you've literally got to dial it down to the half lap of how airy you are and how far you can get and still get to line. I guess the biggest budget is GB. Just in UK sport funding, they're on roughly eight, nine million a year, plus all the commercial deals. So let, let's say they're on 10 million quid. Most of that goes towards the track cycling team. That's their priority. So they're, they're spending upwards of 100,000 pounds per World Cup round. Mm -hmm. Our first season, what do you say, we were on 14, plus burning through credit cards. This year, mm -hmm. we got to just over 60K which is awesome for us. So we were spending roughly seven to 8,000 on a World Cup round, which is tight, but it's so much better than last year. So into uh, yeah, 2017 champs in January, we uh, won two DIP, won the kilo, and won the team suit, beat the senior academy and broke the competition record. Team <laughs> suit, 4,000 meters, 250 meter track, so 16 laps, standing start, fixed gear, four guys, three to finish, cross the line. What effect that is, is just an optimization from a mathematical perspective of how do you get three guys across the line as quick as you can? How do you reduce all your losses? So how do you draft efficiently? 
how can you minimise time losses? So change is obviously a big one. Um, and how do you get the riders as, as powerful as you can and getting everything out towards the line, which is a big question mark because not everyone can be on the front. So if you're not on the front, you can't go any harder than you're the, the person on the front is at the time. Um, what else really matters? Oh, it's obviously being really aerodynamic. So for us, it's kind of energy in, energy out, and you work on both separately. So in our case, we're trying to become better riders. So bigger aerobic power and bigger anaerobic capacity. So that's a combination of different training, whether it's in the gym, on the track, on the turbo, on the road, getting that energy in as big as we can, and then utilizing that as on the energy out. So whether it's equipment, skin suits, position, um, even down to how you ride the track can have a huge impact on that. The Medi method was introduced, first time it was unveiled to the public. So that's effectively where we, or I drop in at Man 3 instead of Man 4 for the first change. So it just keeps another rider further back in the line for longer, a bit more recovery. So in this case we're utilising it for Tipper just to keep him further back in the line until I think he hit the front with like three laps to go for a half lap turn. What, what, how fast did we go? 350? 357. 57. Like when you've got one rider that doesn't get past 2k, another rider that does half a lap. That's pretty impressive. Those are some stats right there. So yeah, we got to the bronze medal final against yeah. France, who are European champs at European the time. European champions. Yeah, uh, shiny jersey. And we were ahead, I think, until like yeah, 2K yeah, yeah. to go when Charlie... So I'd, I'd done my hero turn and we were winning, because, you know, <laughs> yeah, hero turn. Charlie did his hero uh, turn. And then these guys mm -hmm. parked it at the end. The world record for the team pursuit stands at 3.49.804 and was set by Australia in 2018. Who what bike have a PB of 358.8, which they set in Paris, making Darbados the fifth fastest nation of all time in the discipline. The world record in the individual pursuit stands at 4 minutes 7 seconds 0.251 and was recorded by Ashton Lambie at Altitude in Asquilientes in 2018. Altitude provides an advantage of lower air density. The sea level record was set by John Archibald in 2018 and is 4.09584, an average speed of nearly 56 kilometers an hour from a standing start. But why Darbados? It's just been a colloquial term for Derby for mm. years as far as I know. So Dean, who set up who five or six years ago, was born and bred in Derby. Um, Everything about him is supporting local, whether it's schools, whether it's business, whether it's athletes, local is big for him. Um, and it, it just drops into conversation a few months back. And we're like, too right, we're, we're racing at all these UCI World Cups and we just get this nondescript UCI flag. It's like, mm. it's boring. We want something to, to ride for because and represent. Not, although you are British, not, not representing Great Britain. Britain. Yeah, yeah, so we don't have to have all British riders. So Ashton, obviously, American mm. riders come in. And well, registered as so. a British trade team, so. Yeah. They get our points. They get our points. Um, stuff, qualification, but, um, which I'm sure they're very pleased about. Mm. Iconic. We'll have that. Iconic. The amount of like Star Wars. The helmets gifts they are, they are like legal with the UCI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the UCI didn't recognise it. Yeah. Like, guys, these helmets are nearly 10 years old. Like, yeah. I'm sure you've seen them. Whether it's a good old spreadsheet to give to the guys so they can actually just analyse their own performance. We do a lot on the physics of track cycling and digging into it. So we've got some pretty cool technology and actually measuring what's happening on the track and analysing that so we can optimise and give good objective feedback on what happens in training, what happens in Aero testing what happens in racing, so and we this know. Is, this is, um, or in software or in, developed yeah, yeah, ourselves, yeah. Uh, we're working with No Show Connect on the sensor array, which is great because it just adds more variables that we can, well, effectively, it measures more variables that we can then control and account for, which is great for us. Um, yeah, there's lots of little things though, like equipment design, so like our own extensions that we designed. Uh, we work with Walker Brothers on the wheel, we live through God knows how many different wheel shapes and profiles and widths, just with that. Working with a tyre manufacturer at the moment on optimising stuff, so we've developed our own test rigs for tyre testing, which I guess most of the people are barely looking at, so we can dig down and look for those small little gains. It might only be a couple of watts, but we'll take it. Low hanging fruit has been plucked in many areas, but there's other stuff we can work mm -hmm. on. So just for now, it's having to spend more cash on better test rigs because then we can yeah. start to dig into the smaller and smaller stuff with more and more confidence about what we're doing. And the big thing that I don't think that any national government body can actually do is they can't enable the riders to the same extent that we can. So it's, Dan has just said some really cool nerdy stuff, but that's great. But he, for me to actually go fast, I've got to understand what he's saying. I've got, I've got to, you know, he's enabled me to improve myself and, you know, he's given me 
basic spreadsheets to, ah, I can use this. And like, you know, I use it every day. I just did a session. I'm going to use the data today. I'm going to go home. I'm going to spend half an hour looking at my data. I just don't think other nations are going to do that. They're not going to enable the riders and give the information away like that much. Got to empower the athletes. So the yeah. athlete can make their own decisions for the right reasons. So they buy into the process, buy into why they're doing it, why they're trying to get error, why they need to hold that head position, why they need to do whatever it might be. If they understand the science, the maths, the physics behind it, they're going to get. They're going to understand it. They're going to buy into the whole process and get the gains. It goes back to it goes back to morale. It's it's performance isn't just simply numbers on a spreadsheet. There's there's in the end of the day, there's a human being on the start line. When I'm on that start line, I know that I've done as much work as I can aerodynamically, preparation, technique, like kit wise. That you know, I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm I'm happy. I know what's going to happen. It's just executing that. Whereas are you, you, that's not something you can copy. You've got to live for that and that's what we do. What's next? Okay, so last year we won a World Cup and uh, we've had to be kind of at the limit of what we can achieve as a trade team and not being a national government body. We can't go to World Champs, can't go to the Olympics without being selected and that's something we're pushing on in the background and stuff's happening and things are going in the right direction. But because it's not a guarantee and who knows, we want to do something a bit more outrageous and what else can you do than break world records? So that's the plan. Altitude IP record at the moment is by a guy called Ashton Lamy. He's the guy with the moustache. Yeah. Um, and obviously he came and spent a bit of time with us and Really? Well, we looked at his number. So he, uh, <laughs> Aston gave us his uh, numbers from, yeah, from that record and had a good look at it. Yeah. Good ride, but mm. we know, well, Originally, we th thought we knew what the advantage of going to altitude was and what we thought we could do, which was somewhere in the region of 404 to 407. But it's ish. obviously a big ish, it's a big sort of yeah. barrier. But looking at it now and where Ashton was for that, where Ashton is after working with us and what he's protect or what has done on the individual suit before at sea level, etc., you can kind of start to join all the dots together. And honestly, it could be something outrageous mm -hmm. like in the region of. 401, 402, I mean, on a ridiculous 59. day, 359, who knows? Well, the moment planning is around Mexico, Aguas Calientes, where pretty much everyone else goes. On the right day, it's probably the quickest. But from a modeling perspective, you could take, there's loads of papers out there, Bassett Tassel is one of the sort of major ones who's looked at the aerobic power drop off relative to altitude for both unacclimatized and acclimatized athletes. And you're talking at the level of Aguas Calientes, roughly a 10% drop off but that's so specific to each person, which is something mm. we're going to Bournemouth Performance Centre and taking advantage of people like Jamie Pringle to basically pick their brains, do all the tests we need to do to figure out at sea level what we should expect. Uh, so to break the world team pursuit at sea level on a good day, uh, your lap one for man one is going to be somewhere in the region of 1100, 1200 watts for 20 seconds for lap one alone. Mm. Then, roughly speaking, man one's got to be 600 plus. 420 to 440 at man two. Man three and man four are somewhere in the region of 320 to 350, depending how aerodynamic they are, how well they ride just the wheel. For the first lap. Uh, no, no, this is for once you're riding. Right so yeah, lap one, if you're just looking at lap one, I'd say 1200, 900 to 1000, and then around 800 and 800 mm. for three and four. Then yeah, steady state, depending how wherever each rider is, when you're on the front riding at world record splits, you're 39, which is, what's that off the top of my head, 65k an hour? 65, yeah. Yeah, it's somewhere in the region of just over 600 watts for us. At about 120 RPM. Uh, man 2 sitting tight on the wheel, hopefully within literally inches, but doing 420 to 440, which actually feels okay on the wheel, but that's like, <laughs> but suits me at the time, you just like, get out of the way, I want to get on the front. Um, no, 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 come back, come back. <laughs> <laughs> but three and four are actually very comfortable, mm. uh, as odd as that sounds. Um, it's roughly speaking around CP. Depends mm. obviously where the rider's at. In John's case, he's probably the only, one of the only guys in the world who recovers in the line. It's below CP, yeah. yeah which is quite nice. Yeah, John's a clear favourite for it. Yeah. Um, originally we were thinking Harry, but then yeah, Katusha went and stole him. Mm. I, think, I think the, the big one that, I think that will help with the R record is mindset, and I think John's got that. He's got the ability to put himself in that box and just stay there. He does a lot of long efforts on the track. Mm. Loves his 6Ks and 8Ks, so mm. yeah, on paper it's doable, but a lot of people have said that before, going to altitude and uh, falling flat on their face. What so, sort of power do you think it's going to take? For him to break Wiggins? Can I have to say? Can I say the number? No. No, I can't say. Go on.
Okay, John is hugely aerobic, very, very aerobic. He thinks nothing of sitting at 400 watts for loads of efforts all day, every day. That's not the, the classic one of John is that, yeah. so <laughs> on the track, five minutes, he'll easily knock out 500 watts, but his peak power is barely touches 1,000. So, so it's like, yeah. how many people in the world can do 50% of their peak power for five minutes? It's a balancing act, but it's just a way of optimizing around the fact that we have a guy who cannot start quick enough. He is mm. full gas for that first lap, lap and a half, until he's on and secure. New Zealand World Cup, they went... Uh, oh, world's going to be so one. exciting. There's going to be so many teams absolutely pinging it away. There's going to be fast time. fast track, good condition. Fast track, good it's been cleaned as well, whatever that means. Don't know what There's going to be some morale, <laughs> like, polish it. Yeah, it's going to be mint. I'm well excited for Worlds. Well, I found that absolutely fascinating, and I hope you guys did too. Thanks so much for the Hoob Watt Bike team for taking the time to share that insight with us and tell us their story, despite their busy training schedules. And, I'd, well, I'd like to wish them all the best in their up-and-coming world record attempts. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the little bell icon as it helps support the channel and helps us to make more content like this in the future. And to watch another video, well, I highly recommend one on custom painting. It's seriously cool, and you can watch it by clicking here. I'm going to go home now.